Hi everyone, and welcome again to Nettle, the go-to place to learn about business, finance, economics, and much, much more. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click that bell notification button below so that you never miss fresh videos and tutorials you might be interested in. Many thanks to our current Patreon supporters and YouTube members for making this video possible, and we'd also greatly appreciate if you consider supporting us as well. So I'll picture the link in the description or click the join button below for more details. My name is Seba, and today we're investigating autoregressive and moving average model implementation in eViews, or how to estimate AR and MA models for short using eViews 12. We have got a pretty simple data set in our hands recording inflation and unemployment rates in the UK from 1855 until 2022, and uh, we will seek to investigate whether we need AR and MA models to address or resolve autocorrelation and serial correlation issues in this data set, and also how to implement those resolutions. So first of all, let's estimate the equation regressive inflation onto unemployment. That would produce our regression coefficients. We can see that the relationship is inverse, as indeed predicted by the Phillips curve concept. Both coefficients are statistically significant at 1%. Those p-values recorded as probabilities are lower than 1%. However, there is an autocorrelation concern, as the Durbin-Watson statistic is 0.53, which is quite close to zero, uh, highlighting the presence of uh, positive autocorrelation. If you are interested in autocorrelation testing in eViews in particular, please check one of our previous videos out. We will, uh, on the other hand, investigate how this can be resolved. To uh, have a better understanding on what sort of procedures are more appropriate to use here, we can use a correlelogram. We can go to residual diagnostics and select correlelogram. We'll choose an appropriate number of lags. Again, this is something left for the researcher to decide. Let's get 10 lags. 10 years is quite reasonable to testing uh, macroeconomic uh, data. So let's go for 10 years. We see that the autocorrelation plot shows slow decay. It starts at a very high value of 0.74 and then slowly relaxes. If you look at the partial correlation plot, we see that the spike is observable um, only at the first lag, and the partial autocorrelations at higher lags are quite small. They barely uh, go beyond the uh, confidence intervals plotted here as dashed lines. Autocorrelation is severe, but the spike is only observed at lag 1. That suggests that this serial correlation can be resolved by other difference in the data or applying an autoregressive AR model of order one. Let's do that. The easiest way, and uh, perhaps a very intuitive way how we would have done it, would be to simply introduce a lagged dependent term. Again, Evius allows to do these data transformations by just including uh, minus t um, add-in to your variable name. So parentheses minus one would be the first lag of inflation and we'll be able to estimate this model quite um, uh, efficiently. And we can see that the Durbin-Watson statistic this way does indeed improve, uh, increasing to 1.76, which way closer to two. We can see, however, that some positive autocorrelation may still persist, as this is below two still. Uh, however, what eViews advises to do is to use an AR command explicitly. And AR parentheses 1 would estimate autoregressive model of order 1 until convergence using, by default, the maximum likelihood procedure. Let's see how this template uh, differs. The coefficients are quite similar, although they're not identical, due to the fact that this is estimated using maximum likelihood until convergence. We can see that uh, convergence was achieved quite uh, quickly. Only 14 iterations was, was needed. We also have got the sigma squared parameter here, which denotes uh, variance of innovations to the dependent variable. As we've got inflation as our dependent variable, and we introduce an autoregressive term to the model, this is how volatile the innovation to the uh, dependent variable will be, how much volatility will it induce later on down the line. In autoregressive models, especially if we estimate it using um, eViews using the AR command, 
an important feature is to test for stability. Will the model um, converge subject to um, shock to your dependent variable? Uh, to test that, we can go to view uh, armor structure and uh, look for the inverse roots of our uh, AR, in this case, polynomials. If we look at the graph, we see that all of the roots lie within the unit circle. We've just got one root because we've got an AR1 process, which means that our model is indeed stable. Um, we also can verify it by checking the impulse response analysis. Let's say what will happen 100 years down the line with our model forecast if we have got an unexpected disturbance in inflation. And we can see that in terms of our um, impulse response analysis, we have got a, a decaying impact. So it means that the model will converge, that it is stable as verified uh, earlier with the uh, roots plot. And we can see that if we look at accumulated responses, the impact will be persistent, but it will uh, flatten out uh, around 10 years down the line. We can see quite visibly that this graph no longer grows. If it was unstable, if roots were lying uh, beyond the unit circle, you would see um, a more expansive picture. You would have the impulses not relaxing to zero as time passes, and you would have the accumulated uh, responses just exploding to infinity or negative infinity. We can also introduce uh, AR terms of higher orders, for example, AR2, and that generates two autoregressive terms uh, reflecting the impact of uh, inflation one year ago and two years ago uh, onto current inflation that can be interpreted economically as adaptive expectations, how in terms of the Phillips curve, agents adjust their expectation of inflation using historical data, so for example, two lags in this case. And we see that the second AR term is also significant, although only at 10%. However, the overall relationship between inflation and employment remains negative and overwhelmingly statistically significant at 1%. We can see the roots, 0.66 and 0.15. Both roots are real. Sometimes you have complex roots, but what you care about is whether they lie within the unit circle. And indeed, they do, as we can see here and additionally verify using our impulse response with 100 years of um, forecast. And we can see that here the uh, confidence intervals are quite a bit wider as we uh, do introduce uh, more uh, persistence into the model. We introduce two lags and a more complicated lag structure. However, the results are still quite stable. However, another way of combating uh, autocorrelation would be to take differences of our data and let's do this introducing the first difference the d operator of both inflation and unemployment and that would produce a model with a durbin watson stat of 2.09 which is again quite close to two but gravitates towards um, the higher end which means that there might be some positive uh, serial correlation for us to combat uh, we see that in uh, the difference form there is still um, a negative and significant relationship between changes in inflation and changes in unemployment. Uh, so let's have a look at the correlogram. And let's include 10 lags as well to see whether uh, any other uh, additions to the model are required. We see that in terms of our autocorrelation and partial correlation plots, we have got um, some violations of the no autocorrelation or no serial correlation assumption most notably in the second lag. This partial correlation and autocorrelation coefficients um, are quite high. They go beyond the dashed lines, although only a bit. But we can see that the QSTAT, the Lung Box Q statistic, is statistically significant at 1%. And here, as we have got a spike um, across um, some uh, lag that's beyond order one, so we have got a spike at lag order two, uh, a go-to approach would be to estimate a moving average or MA model. Uh, again, this is different to an AR model as we're including lagged residuals instead of lag dependent variables into our specification. So if we were to do it again without any advanced commands, 
we would simply estimate this model, then look at the residuals, we see that there is no residual for the first observation, obviously, because we estimated them all on different data. We can copy the residuals and paste them as a original residual. And now we can refer to this series as a variable in further regression modeling. The resid series is reserved for computing the residuals of the most recently estimated regression model, so we cannot use the resid term in our analysis. If we try to input two lagged, the second lag of residual into the model directly this way, we'll see that resid is not allowed. So we can input the original residual of um, lagged by two, and that will generate our uh, approximation of a moving average model of order two. And we can see that there is indeed some negative uh, response two years down the line to unexpected uh, growth in inflation. This can be interpreted as perhaps a reaction by uh, the central bank or monetary authorities in general. If there is um, an unexpected increase in inflation, they can uh, over tighten uh, monetary policy, overshoot a little bit, and vice versa. If inflation drops too low, they might overshoot in the opposite direction, uh, make monetary policy a little bit too expansionary. And that is what can be picked up by this uh, MA term. It does not uh, contribute to the process of uh, expectation formation if we uh, approach it theoretically, because we're not using the lagged uh, dependent variable, we're using lagged residual. So again, MA models and AR models can have different interpretations as well as different specifications, which is quite important for the interpretation of the results. However, uh, what this uh, specification uh, fails at is uh, to uh, address the convergence issue, simply because uh, our residual should come from this model that we've just estimated and not from some prior model. Obviously, this is close enough, but to make it um, very rigorous, we can use the explicit MA command in um, eViews, which is just MA, and in the brackets you um, specify the order. Uh, this uh, produces a model with results that are very close to the ones we've seen, yet they are not exactly the same. They're qualitatively similar. We have got still a negative relationship uh, between the changes in inflation, changes in unemployment. That's some, um, that's what we care about if we are estimating the Phillips curve. Uh, however, the MA2 term is negative and significant. Again, interpretable the same way as we did. And if we want to test for convergence, we can have a look that the model is indeed uh, stable. We have got two roots here, despite the fact we have got one term, because this term is of order two. And we can also have a look at the impulse response. And that shows that uh, the uh, convergence is quite quick, despite the fact that we included a second term instead of term of order one, as we did for our AR model. And this is quite typical for MA models. They are way stabler than AR models as they deal with unexpected disturbances and lag those rather than uh, lag, uh, independent, lag dependent variables themselves. And that's all there is for the estimation of AR and MA models in EVUs and stability diagnostics. Please leave a like on this video if you found it helpful. In the comments below, I'm eager to see any further suggestions for videos in business, finance, or economics you'd like me to record. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and consider supporting us on Patreon. Thank you very much, and stay tuned.